Okay, everybody, how's it going? Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, so this episode here, we're going to do, I'll just be honest with you, it's a talking head segment, okay? Um, so if that's not your jam, then see you later. Uh, next episode will be something, all right? However, due to the weather, I'm not opening up the windows or the door to sit here and have air ventilation when it's minus 40, minus 50 outside. It's just not happening, okay? Uh, I am Canadian, but I don't like the cold that much. I'm softer than puppy shit when it comes to the cold. So, today's episode, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping, and then we're going to get on to what I have, have done on this, which is a lot of brain work. So, <clears throat> first off, I was chatting with my old editor, uh, Liam Dunning over at Dunning Imagery, yeah, Dunning Imagery, and I'm like, listen, you know, this is what happened with the channel, YouTube, for some reason, just scrapped the whole thing. Um, what do you still have, if anything, from when we did all those recordings? And he's like, Chris, I keep everything, so I'm going to dig, dig up everything that I can find for you. And as I find it, I'll send it to you. So it's like, perfect. Um, anyway, he did his digging, all that other good stuff, and he found a bunch of episodes. So once I get those, I'm going to start queuing them up, and it's going to be our Throwback Thursday segment where it's the old veteran welding content, but it's on the new Vet Built channel. I will cut out the intro and all that so it's a little bit more streamlined um, and then go from there. All right, so we got that there. That's the housekeeping that I want to see that I want to let you guys know about and go from there. Second thing, seeing as how we're rebuilding the channel completely, please like, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff. Please like, subscribe, and follow. Um, it really helps out, especially seeing as how we're starting from scratch again, and then going from there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Grab my notes, my notepad. All right, uh, new episodes. Uh, new episodes I'm going to be trying posting every Monday. Between Monday and Wednesday, that's my the window I want to give myself. If I can't do it between there, whether it's physical health, mental health, dealing with sick kids, whatever, it's not going to happen. You're still going to have that one episode from Throwback Thursday, and then that's it. Um, podcast, I have no idea, no idea what's going on with the podcast. Um, lost all those episodes as well when I lost the channel. So I'm going to chat with, uh, Chris uh, Lavelle and go from there. Who's the co-host over at Fox dog fabrication. So if you need welding and you're in the New York or Syracuse area, give them a hit up. All right. So let's move on to what i have been doing this week with Blue. all right so this week because i can't sit still and because i have a lot of things in my head that are taking up too much bandwidth um, which i hate because i'll be trying to figure out fenders and the back of my mind and trying to figure out fuel system um, i wanted to get everything down on my project specific notebook of every part that i still need every the way I'm going to design it, the way I'm going to fabricate it, all that good stuff. Um, and that has covered everything from fuel, air, suspension. Uh, well, suspension I still have to go through. Well, not go through, just go over. I just want to refresh my mind on it before I dive into that. Um, body work, the whole nine yards. So we're going to start from the back. I hope I'm pointing at it. The back of Bluebell, and we're going to work our way forward, all right? Make sure I'm still recording audio. And I am. Groovy. It's a good day. All right. If you don't mind coming with me, and uh, we'll get to chatting. This fender here, I started putting together, and I was going to go, whatever I did with the driver's side, I was going to do it the passenger side at the same time, and then just pour coal and get everything done at the same time. 
Well, that went to shit quick. So I was working on this side here and I had four of these guys, two here and two here, and I could not get them to lay flat. And it was getting very concerning. Uh, and what I mean by that is like, if I sat there, hopefully I can get it here. And so like, if you're looking at the, let's say the top of this guy here, when you sit there and you come up and this guy starts coming into view, you see how it's relatively flat all the way along. And then when you start coming up, looking at all the other ones, once you go from this one to this one, it's fine. But when you went from this one to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, they were up about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And I couldn't get them to lay flat. And it was really worrying me because I was pulling out all the stops. I hammered and dollied for about half a day, both hammering on this side and dollying on the other side. And then same thing in here and nothing was working. I couldn't get these to come flat. Then I started thinking maybe it's a rigidity issue. Maybe this isn't strong enough, even though on the backside I had at that point, after I hammered and dolly, it stitched in the, essentially this is just a long ass washer. Um, nothing was working and I was starting to panic and I'm like, shit, if this side is like this, what's the other side going to be like? So I came over to the other side. I bolted in the backing plate and this here, and it was worse. It was 10 times worse. So this, the, this guy and this guy, as well as this one here and not so much this one, but pretty close. No joke. They were like this. And I started to really panic. So I sat there and I'm like, okay, think, how are you going to fix this? How are you going to fix this? And like I do with 90% of all the problems, I went and got a beer. No joke. I went, I got a beer, uh, and I stood back. I was standing back across the shop looking at it. And then I'm like, okay, I need to do some hammer and dolly work. So I came in and I started hammering and dollying from down here all the way up and across. Didn't do anything. And then I remember listening to a, um, oh, what's his name? Bobby Walden. All right. Bobby Walden over at Walden Speed Shop in his 32 coop chop video. It's like the first video. He's like, if you're gonna, before you chop anything, make sure the body work is done. Before you do anything, make sure all the repair, make sure the repairs, make sure the repairs are done. And that's exactly how he said it. And I'm like, okay, well maybe I need to do some, do more repair work than what I think I'm doing or what I think I need to go above, go, go further than what I think I need to do. So I sat there and things like this here, okay? Down in here, it was in almost two inches down here. So as best as I could, I just beat the piss out of it and just brought it out. It helped a little bit here. Not a lot, but a little bit. And then I sat there and I followed it up and around again and it helped a little bit. But ultimately, it was brute force that fixed this. So I literally, I just grabbed a hold of these and I just started wrenching down on them as hard as I could. And I, I'd start here and I worked my way over and down. And then I come back to here over and down. And every time I did that back and going from front to back, cause you want to chase the wave. That's what I was doing. I was chasing the wave out. Um, it, it got a little bit better. So I did no, I did that for about 45 minutes. And it just slowly but surely came out. Now, when you sit there, I really hope I'm doing justice with this camera. When you start looking at the horizon, so if you're looking through this part here, you can see in behind it, the next part coming up, they just click. And then the next one, click, 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 
click all the way down. So I'm not a body guy. Please don't get the impression that I'm a body guy. I'm not. This project here is the most in-depth body work I have ever done. And I'm going to be getting a shrinker and stretcher here next week. And I'm actually going to build myself a nice set of fenders, okay? More to follow on that. I'm going to have to build a buck and go from there. But once I did that and I got this the way I liked it, I came back to the other side. And I started thinking, well, shit. You went ahead and you stitched all this in, which I really regret. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-weld these back in, all right? And then I'm just going to do the same thing. Because now with that spine in there, it's just going to be stronger. And I'm going to weld the same spine in the other, on the other one. And then I'm just going to reef down on it and reef down on it and reef down on it and chase the wave out. Then the other thing I was thinking about, once again, I got to give Bobby credit where credit's due. Um, he was taught in another episode, same build series. He was talking about, um, what was it? Something to do with the doors and how the four doors were essentially like a three sided box and they were flimsy as shit and blah, 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 blah. Well, let's get a top down view. What do you see? It's a three sided box. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to build the tailgate, the rear sections here, because each section is going to go roughly about from here to almost to where the clamp is. All right. Because I don't need a full box. I'm not putting plywood in here and stuff like that. It's not going to be doing that anymore. Um, and then moving forward from there. And then the brake lights, one's going to be roughly here. And then maybe an amber down here. And then going from there. So that's what that is. Um, what are these dogs doing? Come on, guys. Anyway, so there's that there. And like I'm, in previous posts, I talked about radiusing this in with a piece of tube and getting all tricked. I don't got time for that. May 18th, this thing needs to be on a trailer going to either a trail ride or an open house over at Four Wheel Freedom in Cochrane. Um, so as long as this is trail ready, I'm happy. Because a month after that, this has to be road ready, which is going to be a big push as well. But anyway, so that is that back there. Fuel, let's talk fuel. All right, folks, so let's talk fuel system. All right, um, so the fuel tank's going to be bed mounted just because I plan on doing Rubicon. King of the Hammer, or not King of the Hammers, but uh, Johnson's Valley, wheeling up in the Yukon, stuff like that. And last thing I want to worry about is a punctured fuel tank, especially when I'm up in the Yukon and like 500 kilometers away from the nearest civilization. Um, that's the last thing I want to worry about. So we're going to go bed mounted. Luckily, I don't have to worry about um, putting lumber in here or anything like that anymore. So... We're going to move forward. This bracket here, I got to modify a little bit, but what I want to do is I want to have the fuel tank underneath this. I'm also going to cut out a bit of the floor just so we can sit there and have, um, try and sneak in a few more gallons of fuel underneath the box. Uh, the distance between the box and where the drive shaft is going to live, we got like a foot when it's at full stuff where it's going to clear and we'll be fine. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of uh, uh, him and hawing on is capacity. So uh, I did the maths and underneath this guy here, I'm going to be running 26 and change gallons of fuel, which is like 120 liters, which is a little bit bigger than the stock fuel tank that came in the 01 Sierra that this or that the donor motor came from. But like I said, I don't want to, I, I want to wheel all day. And last thing I want to worry about is fuel. So I have two of these brackets. I'm seriously contemplating cutting them up, welding them together, and then having like a full, like almost 
I'd say at least 48 liters because I can't fit two of these in here wide. It's like one in just a little over half. So let's say 40 liters, 40 gallons, sorry. But then we're in slip tank real estate. So well, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as they're baffling aside, it's fine. But uh, point is, is this is where the fuel tank's gonna go. If it's gonna be one like this, then I'm just gonna have Jerry's on one side. Um, I'll carry two Jerry's. And then on the other side could be like a motor oil and windshield washer fluid and antifreeze and all that other good stuff can go in there. And then on top, I'll just have like a toolbox where I can just sit there, open it up, and I'll have all of my tools in there that I could need minus a impact driver or an impact gun and the socket for the wheels. Because what I want to do is like what uh, Morgan Clark has done on several of his builds where on the passenger side, you have the door bar that comes down on the bottom is just going to be a spot where that impact driver lives, plain and simple. So if we got to change tires, passenger gets out, undoes the back tire, I take the back tire off and we start tinker farting around and getting ready to go from there. Anyway, where the fuel tank goes under the box, I'm going to then take it from there and I'm going to go straight underneath, underneath the cab and I'm going to run it along the top of the trans tunnel. Okay. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, that is a dumb, dumb idea, Chris. It is going to be so freaking hot. It's not going to be funny. Well, li li listen, okay? So let's look first. Before you start hammering on your keyboards, there's going to be a lot of room from the top of the transmission to the bottom of the transmission tunnel. Even with a 4L80E in here, I'm confident that it's going to have sufficient room. And also, if you sit there and you come up over here and you see these hard lines, those are factory hard lines. So the, from the factory, they're already running it up the transmission. Uh, the one thing I'm going to have to do is probably coat the line in something and go from there. But you can see where that braided line ends. That's where it's going to tee in. And then that is going to be it for uh the fuel system so it's going to go tank filter pump fuel line up into the motor if you know of a better way because you have done it better yourself let me know if you're just going to sit there and be like oh you need to do it like this because i said so please go pound sand all right but if it's a legitimate point or you're just curious let me know i'm all about learning uh, seats. Let's chat about seats. Okay. So this is another area where I have been not losing sleep, but definitely, definitely putting a lot of effort into, because this is where I'm going to be living while driving the vehicle. Um, which is also why I bumped the firewall forward and the same thing with the floor pan here. So let's hop in and, uh, Chinwag about that. Okay. So right off the hop, pardon me. Right off the hop, this is pretty much exactly where I want to be. Okay. So when I did this, I teed up off of this guy here, this center line, because this is where the uh, steering column is going to come up. This is also where the steering wheel was before, which is off center to the gauges, which is driving me freaking insane. So my seven inch Holly LED display is going to live here. All right. I got tons of tons of like my leg is pretty much straightened right out. So I can't complain there. Um, and also like if I really wanted to get lazy, I could pop prop it up in there like that and I'm good to go. All right. So I have tons of room to stay comfortable while I'm driving this thing for hours on end. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to have to 
remember is when I'm building the seats is I do eventually want to do a chop into this thing. I want to bring this down a couple inches. So I'm going to have to put a helmet on, make sure everything's kosher and then go from there. The only thing I'm going to, I'd like to feel in the seats, like when I really suck my back into the, the seat there is I like it to lean back a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's it. I just wanted to lean back a little bit more. Um, I, I think it'd be more comfortable. So we're going to pull that off somehow and then go from there. But yeah, all in all, it feels great. They're going to have to come forward maybe two inches because I need to clear the real estate for the rear window. But other than that, guys, it's, it's, I'm happy with where it is. Underneath the seat there, uh, I'm gonna have it so that it comes all the way back, pretty much to the back wall, and then all this is gonna be storage in here. Personal storage for the driver, personal storage on the passenger side, and then also in behind the seats, I might have something in there as well, I'm not sure what. The battery, all right, is gonna live right down in here, and that's it. I'm going to go with a hot, not a Holly, a Optima yellow top. And that's it. All right. So the other key thing in having a motor work is air. And this is something where I really started to get concerned the other day. However, I don't know. I was still having fun trying to figure it out. So uh, let me show you guys what my thought process is. So before I can really start talking about that, I need to talk about also the front, the front part of the frame. You see how we have these stupid, how it just balloons out like this here and here for no freaking reason. Well, my rad is 30 and a half inches, which is pretty much center of that hole to center of this hole here. And I'm going to have to do something. Uh, cause I don't want the rad leaning back. I, I want it straight up. So it has the best airflow possible on the back side, on the fan side, I am going to sit there and have a, um, have a shroud. So the fan works better. I'm also going to be running the stock fan that's on there. This guy right here, I need to replace it cause somehow it cracked, but a fan just like that is what's going to be on there. So this is my thought process and I'm going to go from the frame. I'm probably getting blinded by the light. Sorry guys. I'm going to go from the frame up. So follow me. So my thought process right now is to cut this off. All right. Cut it off and then do like a custom frame section where the winch plate and bumper and all that are all built into it. That's my thought process. <coughs> I'm going to try and keep this cro stock cross member. All right. However, if I got to cut it out, I'll cut it out down the road and then that'll be it. Uh, power steering pump is a JK ultra heavy duty PSC version. I forget what the proper name is, but I want it to live in the same location because this is where this act, these, bleh, where the IFS is, that's where the Dana 60 is going to live. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I can still keep this here. Then what I'll do is I'm still going to have to sit there and notch the frame just a little bit so the rad could slide in and then hopefully that's it. That's, that's all it is. I understand if I get in an accident hard enough and I tweak the frame, I'm going to lose my rad. But honestly, at that point, if I'm tweaking the frame, I'm probably going to have bigger issues throughout the entire vehicle, like the cab getting destroyed or whatever even though I am going to have a roll cage in it, but you, you know what I'm saying? It's going to take something pretty substantial to, to do that. So I'm going to do that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the front clip on and I've been trying to figure out and picture how the, how the tube work and tube structure up here is all going to work but I, I'm having a really hard time doing it without the body on there. And to be honest, I'm just going to wait until the, the, I put the front clip on there probably later today before I really start sitting there and flexing the gray matter and trying to figure something out. 
Because what I'd like to do is have it so that I got my power steering or my gear steering gear here. The PSC reservoir is going to be roughly about here. And then I'm going to have my brake booster and all that back there. I'm going to have a reservoir over here for the windshield washer fluid. Then I'm going to, my air filter is either going to live here or it's going to live down over here behind the rad and I'll make a custom box for it. But either way, I'm going to have to wait until the box or the front clip is on there to figure all that out. Just the way that the access into the uh, engine compartment is because they have that pointed hood as well. I don't want to have to sit here and reach over like two and a half feet of body to get into something on the trail and tinker for it. I want to be able to sit there, come up, undo these four bolts on both sides, open the hood, and then I'll have a pin in the mechanism, which holds the hood up on its own. Undo maybe like two or three bolts along the fender here and here. And then one guy on each side, pick up the fender, put, bring it out and plop it on the trail. That's my goal. I want that race car accessibility on this. So I can sit there, have the vehicle running the whole nine yards and not worry about shit. Am I going to sit here and not have access to the alternator? whether I put it up high or down low, or maybe if I put in another alternator down here or whatever, I want as much accessibility on this as possible. The other point that I want to talk about is the um, air intake. Okay. So I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the air intake and I'm trying to figure it out. And there's a build thread on irate four by four.com. It's a wolf, a Jeep and wolf's clothing clothing. I want to say anyway, he's running the same intake, but he's, he's got four inches that comes out. And just with the, the radius right here, he loses about an inch and a half inch and three quarters due to that guy. So what I want to do is sit there and have unrestricted airflow going in to solve that. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to take this off. This is a soft line, soft line. Uh, there's another soft line over here. All right. So all of these I can remake if I have to, and I'm going to make a spacer. So it comes out about half an inch, three quarters of an inch on top, but on the bottom, we're talking about an inch. Okay. So it takes this, kicks it up, and then it comes out, up and over. Now, if you're thinking, well, Chris, what about your hood clearance? All right, let's stand back and look at this a little bit. Okay. From the top of the motor to the top of the white here, that's almost 10 and a half inches, all right, of unused space. So I got tons of room. So if I sit there and I come out over and down, or I come up over and down this way, either way, it's going to work. And to be honest, I could take this and I could have the filter up here and it's not going to hurt anything. So that's it as for parts that I need to purchase still on this. So let's chat about that for a minute. So parts that I still need to purchase on this are as follows rims. I need a set of bead locks for this thing. I'm thinking, actually, it doesn't matter. I need bead locks. I'm going to buy them and just go from there. <coughs> Excuse me. So bead locks, I'm going to be going to vibrant for both the intake and fuel delivery systems on this. For the coolant side of the house, my plan is, is to sit there and just use whatever works. If I can get like a flexible hose and I can just go um, stainless steel hose clamp to stainless steel hose clamp going from the pump to the upper rad and the same thing going from lower rad to lower or from pump to lower rad. Perfect. That's perfect. Um, I'm not too worried about that. And then the only other thing that I'm going to have to do is pull off the water pump and cap the lines for the 
Actually, no, I don't need to pull off the water pump. Because I want to run a heater in this, but like I said, it's, that's a nice to have. I don't need it for the summertime. What I can just do is take a piece of hose in the time being and just do like a, a loop, a U-turn, clamp it on. Okay, so there we go. There's that done. Um, this is one of the things I enjoy about these YouTube videos is even though I'm sitting here and I'm talking and I'm, you think I'm teaching you everything I know, a lot of the times as I'm chatting, I'm figuring out problems in my head or... I'm talking about something that I've already figured out in my head, but once I say it, it's just like, oh, what, is there a better way to do it? Can I do it like this? Can I do it like that? Anyway, so that's it. We got rims, fuel, air. Uh, already got the tires. Winch cable I got to pick up. I'm going to try and go with a rope. Try. I'm going to go with rope, and I'm going to get that through four-wheel drive Freedom and Cochrane. I'm going to try and support local. Gears, front and rear. Front's going to be a spool. Rear's going to be either selectable or it's going to be a um, like a Detroit locker style. Other than that, that's about it. That's it. So I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Uh, if you have any comments, please put them down below. I want to hear them. <coughs> um, and we'll just go from there, guys. Uh, this build is, like I said, May 18th. That's the hard line to have this thing trail ready. June 18th, we'll say, that's when it has to be roadworthy. Anyway, guys, I'm signing off. I'm going to go get myself a cup of coffee. I'm going to finish editing this video, and then we'll go from there. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Stay focused. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Um, and remember, if you wouldn't put your pecker in there, don't put your finger there. Cheers.
All right. There we go. So now let's talk. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, Maverick, you scared the shit out of me. Ooh. 